Assalamu alaikum and good day to everyone. I hope all of you are doing well so far in our high speed aerodynamics course. Last time we looked at part 2 of the oblique shock chapter, which is on the strategy to solve problems. Today we're going to continue a bit more on part 2 by looking at some special cases and limitations of oblique shocks. If you look at the oblique shock chart, we can see that for every deflection angle delta, there'll be two shock angle betas. And in general, oblique shocks will cause supersonic flows to deflect. But interestingly, the chart also shows cases of shocks when there is no deflection at all, i.e. when the deflection angle delta equals to zero. And for this condition, there are two cases of shock angle betas for every cases of Mach number values. The first case is when the shock is slanted at the Mach wave angle, where beta equals to the arc sine of 1 over m1. This is the shock wave produced when a small particle or very narrow object travels at supersonic speed. There's no need for the flow to be deflected at all, hence delta equals to zero. This is because there's no physical surface that's deflecting the flow. Another case is when beta equals to 90 degrees. This is actually the case when the shock is a normal shock. When the shock is perpendicular to the flow, it won't deflect the flow because all the supersonic flow will be compressed across the shock. There's no tangential component of the supersonic flow. And for both cases, if you plug back either values of beta into the tangent delta equation here, you'll definitely get back delta equals to zero. Here, we can introduce the concept of the strong shock versus the weak shock. A strong shock is where the flow is strongly compressed across the shock. Between the two cases above, the normal shock is a strong shock where you have a supersonic flow fully compressed to be a subsonic flow after the shock. This is the strongest possible shock actually, because there's no tangential component at all for this fully normal shock. A weak shock is when the flow compression across the shock is relatively small. Between the two cases above, the Mach wave is a weak shock, because the flow compression is much smaller. In fact, it is the weakest shock possible, because the flow compression is almost negligible, and that M2 is practically equal to M1. We can generally differentiate the strong and weak shocks in the following way. A strong oblique shock has a larger shock angle beta, which decomposes the incoming velocity into a large normal velocity mn1 and a smaller tangential velocity ml1. That large mn1 will cause a large flow compression. Because ml1 is small, which is equivalent to ml2, combining ml2 and mn2 will produce a small resultant vector m2 which will become a subsonic flow. On the other hand, a weak oblique shock has a smaller shock angle beta which decomposes the incoming velocity into a smaller normal velocity mn1 and a larger tangential velocity ml1. But even though mn1 is now smaller than the previous strong shock case, it is by itself still supersonic otherwise it won't be able to produce any oblique shock. That small mn1 will cause a small flow compression. And because ml1 is large and is equivalent to ml2, combining ml2 and mn2 will produce a large resultant vector m2, which will remain as a supersonic flow. Now, coming back to the oblique shock chart again, we can see that there are two solutions of beta for every delta. The lower value of beta is the weak shock solution, and the upper value of beta is the strong shock solution. Experimentally, it has been found out that in most cases, weak shocks will be formed instead of the strong shocks, so we will focus on the weak shock solutions only in this class. In some special cases, strong shocks do occur. We will briefly look at some of these examples later on. Second part of this session is on the limitation of an oblique shock in terms of its maximum deflection angle, or delta max. 
Delta max is the maximum angle that a supersonic flow can deflect through a fully attached oblique shock. You can see examples of the attached shocks in these two images on the left. When the oblique shock is an attached shock, its angle beta is uniform throughout, starting from the leading edge of the object. If the deflection angle of the inclined surface is bigger than delta max, then the supersonic flow won't be able to deflect through an oblique shock that is attached to the surface. In this case, the shock will be detached from the surface with some gap in between the shock and the leading edge of the surface. A detached shock consists of a curved shock enveloping the leading edge of the object, trailed by a slanted oblique shock section. As we trace the oblique shock curve from the middle section, the shock transitions from a normal shock, then a curved shock with large shock angle betas, into finally a uniform oblique shock with a smaller beta further downstream. With this normal shock and the larger oblique shock angle on the curved part, the detached shock will generally be stronger compared to the attached shock in terms of its flow compression. So the question is, can we calculate what the delta max is that separates between an attached shock and a detached shock? The answer is, yes, we can. But before doing that, let's understand technically what it is. From the oblique shock chart, we can locate the delta max to be the pointed end on the right side of each M1 contour. Beyond this delta max, there's no beta value that is plotted. This means that there is no possible solution to the oblique shock equation to produce an attached shock. To find delta max, we'll treat this problem as a mathematical problem. You have the equation of the tangent delta that represents each of this M1 contour. By differentiating this equation to get d delta divided by d beta and setting it to zero, you are basically setting the slope of the contour from its vertical orientation to be zero. By doing this, you can find the value of beta associated with the maximum value of delta. Once you have found that value of beta, which is labeled here as beta delta max, you can plug it back into the tangent delta equation up here, and this will get you the value of delta max. I've mentioned that a detached shock is stronger than an attached shock. A detached shock will produce a bigger flow compression that leads to bigger pressure changes across the shock. This is not preferable at all because we will have a bigger wave drag on the object. The question now is, can we change a detached shock into an attached shock? The answer is yes, we can, within certain limits. From this oblique shock chart, you can see that the larger the Mach number is, the bigger the delta max is. For example, if we have an object flying at Mach 2 with an inclined surface deflection of 30 degrees, the shock will be detached from the object. The reason is because the delta max for a Mach 2 is 23 degrees, which is smaller than the actual delta of the surface. But we can make the shock attached to the object if we fly faster, say at Mach 3, with a delta max of 34 degrees. Now, this delta max is bigger than the delta of the inclined surface. And we now have a clear solution of beta where an oblique shock will form to deflect the incoming flow at 30 degrees. So with that, we've covered the special cases and the limitations on the oblique shocks. In our next video, we will look at cases of oblique shocks reflecting from surfaces to produce multiple oblique shocks. Until then, bye!